today Portugal might come under very high pressure if they fail to obtain all the, the funding they need, um, making them effectively the third country which will have to be built up within the Eurozone. Um, why, why is this important? Um, when we go back to 1992, there were many observers who thought um, um, about the predecessor of the Euro, the ERM, that it's, um, it's politically very important. Um, countries have invested a lot of political capital into it, so they're not going to be just willing to, to let it go down the drain. And especially in the UK, people were, were quite sure that in Germany, the, the Bundesbank just adapt its policy um, to suit the, the needs of the UK. But at that time, George Soros, um, an expert in, in finance, clearly he, uh, he understood the debate in Germany and he understood that in Germany uh, people were, would not be prepared to tolerate inflation just for the sake of keeping the political construct of the ERM together. And then he, he made a lot of money on that and the British government lost a lot of money because they, uh, they defended the construct for far too long. So in, in the same way we're seeing a, a similar thing right now. Um, so everybody who says that one should not underestimate the political will of European leaders is probably correct. But at the other hand, one should not underestimate the... The, the political will in Germany to actually apply the rules and, uh, and the German adherence to, to hard money given their historical experience. So, and that is why um, the, the lawsuit of Professor Kerber, which is, I believe, one of the three lawsuits going on against the Velo, is, is, so, uh, is so important. And it has been argued that uh, Angela Merkel uh, statements to include um, uh, bondholders um, into future bailouts, which has accelerated the Irish crisis, was in fact driven by the, the, the threat of the German Constitutional Court. Um, so um, I would like now to now give the word to, uh, to Professor Kevin to uh, develop on this. Thank you, Peter, for these kind words of uh, introduction. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming uh, this morning. Uh, I'm very, very happy to be with you. Um, I may, first of all, present uh, not only myself, but my friend and colleague, Mr. Stater, who is an invaluable help to me in uh, this most important girl suit which I've ever conducted in my long career uh, as a an antitrust lawyer and as a constitution lawyer. As a matter of fact, you uh, will remember that I um, challenged the constitutional or the German government as well as on the Lisbon Treaty because I thought, together with other uh, people in Germany, uh, that the Lisbon Treaty would uh, be a threat to um, uh, the core of German sovereignty. Uh, this is a subject which I'm extremely attached to, although not at all in a right-wing or nationalistic-minded uh, way, but uh, in a way of uh, um, being sensitive to the right of self-determination. We have a finance minister, uh, his name is Mr. Schäuble. From time to time I have the impression as though he wants to um, um, to, to put Germany under, under Brussels' roof and have the French finance minister decide, decide directly on German fiscal and economic policy. Uh, this is a, an understanding of European integration, which as a matter of fact I do not share. Uh, to um, reasonably spend uh, this hour and a half with you, we have prepared a little handout, and as I have a, an explicit disliking for PowerPoint presentations because they prevent dialoguing with you. We have um, made a little outline which gives you the, 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 the structure of my expose as well as some information on who Europolis is. And as a matter of fact, I'd like to tell you that I created Europolis in 1998 as a platform for European dialogue and as a platform of uh, um, many, many opinions because Europe by definition is a pluriverse. And, uh, uh, as we, we know all together, uh, the, the European Commission, which is more and more turning into a European government, 
needs opposition from public European opinion. As we don't have one public European opinion, at least I wanted to make a modest contribution to an emerging a European public opinion and your presence today, exception made of the presence of our charming Japanese colleague, is um, as a proof that uh, my hope and my belief that European public opinion will be emerging is not only wishful thinking. So let us turn after these words of introduction to the subject itself. Will the Constitutional Court put an end to the rule bailout? Well, if I knew the answer, I would not be here. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I will leave you with great doubt uh, even after this session. And I owe it to uh, the respect I feel for the court as the highest instance of uh, jurisdiction in Germany, and uh, respect I feel as a scholar that I will not, uh, I will resist the temptation of making very polemic remarks and uh, uh, creating a lot of uh, uh, comments uh, which uh, will not uh, lead to better understanding of the complex subject and which will only be misleading. Let me nevertheless start with one statement which reminds us a little bit about uh, of, the, of the lively debate we have had in, in Germany. A leading financial institution, the one which is printed here in 1995, uh, advocated the course of the euro. Namely, the, the, the research department made, made several brochures and uh, complained that the German public didn't really understand the benefits of the euro. And they concluded, another reason for the opposition in Germany is the insufficient public debate on the opportunities and risks of European Monetary Union. As Monetary Union approaches, it is all the more important to intensify the information and educational efforts regarding Monetary Union. So we accomplished today a task which uh, this leading financial institution called uh, or considered being topical even in 1995. As a matter of fact, the prophecy of this leading German institution about the, the prosperous development of the Eurozone um, uh, proved and substantiated by so-called scientific experts has turned out to be totally wrong. And I would like to give you today a very sober legal and economic perspective of what the situation is in Germany in front of the Constitutional Court and what could be perhaps um, an institution development because every crisis uh, is as well a chance to improve uh, the institutional uh, functioning of the European community. I, I happen to believe that European community is a better name than European Union because, as a matter of fact, this is essentially a community. The political context. The political context is one of the um, growing herding of the so-called Euro elite to do everything, that is to say, to use taxpayers' money to save the Euro. And saving the Euro becomes, irrespective of the legal limits, uh, a goal in itself. <clears throat> First of all, let me clarify one thing. There will be European integration after, even if the euro fails, even if we have to reshape the European Monetary Union, even if we find out that the initial design of the European Monetary Union with uh, 11 initial members uh, and uh, now 16 members uh, has been um, erroneous. Uh, there are very major challenges of European policy, amongst uh, which I count uh, European defence, in a very goalist way, by the way. Uh, so those of us, or those of the political class, who conjure up the image of failing Euro, or failing Europe because the Euro project fails, uh, they uh, are afraid of their own survival. So if ever they say we have to save the euro irrespective of the violations of law, irrespective of the taxpayers' money, I cannot follow them. I regret utterly that um, uh, the European Treaty has um, been becoming soft law, um, not only implicitly, but explicitly. Let this be remembered. The French, then a day's Secretary of State in charge of uh, a European affairs, Monsieur Pierre Lelouch said, in the night of the, in the, night of the 9th of May, uh, the treaty has been rewritten, and has been rewritten without the consent of neither of those 
uh, organs and institutions uh, whose right it is to consent to a major change of the European uh, treaty. Um, when uh, trade unions in Great Britain tried to uh, do a lot of sabotage in the 70s, the master of the role, Lord Denning, said, be you ever so high, the law is above you. And if I have the, the honor and the privilege to talk to you today, uh, it is to remember as well that sooner or later, those who simply spit at law and rules and who challenge the rule of law which has been set down uh, in the treaty to govern uh, the European Monetary Union, uh, they will um, fail sooner or later, not only because there will be legal defeat in the Constitutional Court, but as well because uh, these rules have been laid down in order to make the European Monetary Union function. Um, so we don't have today a uh, premature judgment about the failure of the euro as such as a currency, but we have, as a matter of fact, a conclusive judgment about the failure of the application of the treaty. And if the treaty has not been